Hello, sir. Oh, okay, sorry. No, I no, have no, a, new, a new computer. Aha, well, con new year, new computer. Awesome. Yeah, I mean, uh, I lost uh, the other one, so it's not a great thing. <laughs> You look Wait, good you, in this one. <laughs> you lost your computer? Like, yeah, like, on the like train. Bro. On the train, I guess. Wow, but it was right. just the computer, not your backpack or something no, like that? No, just, just a computer. Oh, my God. Well, uh, what, what do you a, have? It was, a, it was a bad one, so I don't care. Okay. <laughs> what, what, what do you have? Like a, a Mac or like an old Mac? No, or... I have a very basic, uh, I don't know. I even don't know the brand. <laughs> okay. Well, uh, HP. Okay, HP, yeah. It's uh your 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 just a work computer, I guess. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's kick things off. Um thank you so much again. Uh Alvaro Mendizabal here talking to again two of the best, most amazing guitarists, guitar professors, scholars of this instrument uh, in open strings. So thank you so much, Fabio Sanon, professor of uh, looking forward to it. Thanks. Thank you, thank you. Uh, so, Fabio Sanon and Judy Kael don't need introductions. Uh, but yeah, thank you so much again and Happy New Year to you too. Happy New Year. <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah, so what's new? What's uh, what's up? I mean, Fabio, I know you were talking a little bit before and uh, uh, I know you're in Brazil taking the month off. How how was it for you, uh, Judy Kael? I mean, I, I, I am on holidays exactly today, actually, I would say. Ah, nice. Starting, <laughs> uh, you know, the sem semester change. Yeah, no, no. I, I, you, I saw you've been posting a lot about the applications uh, yeah. for your school, so that usually goes on until March. So, yeah, if anyone yeah. Uh, wants yeah. to study with you, they should like, you know, make it happen in the next two weeks or three weeks or something like that. Yeah, three weeks. Deadline, no? Yes, yes. It's because I'm wor I'm working in two schools, so it's kind of we got it. But this one, this one is for Geneva, right? Yeah. Okay. Yep. Cool. Cool. Yes. 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 And, and usually how many students you take in or like how does it work out or? I mean, it depends. Now uh, in Geneva, I have a lot of students. I have like four, four, 15 students. So it's really a lot. I don't know exactly who will uh, will finish. So it kind of depends on that because they, mm -hmm. uh, some of them, they might do a second master's of pedagogy, but they're still having the guitar class normally. Got it, got it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and, and usually how many people apply? Like I mean, the first, last year it was a lot. Because it's on video, so I mean a lot. It was maybe forty-five to fifty, but uh, because it's on it's on on on, uh, on video, so it's kind of easy to do. And uh, last year, I think I took maybe four, three, four, four, I guess. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Nice. Three, three actually. Got it. Got it. Got it. And that's yeah. across like all levels, so like bachelor's, master's, anything. Bachelor, yeah, master and postgraduate. Yeah. Uh -huh. And what yeah. kind of postgraduate? So beyond masters, what is because in, in Germany we have this concert examen, which is kind of like a hybrid, it's like an artistic diploma. Yeah, I mean postgraduate is uh, I mean so far I just had one. Uh it's uh, I mean they are part of the class and they have lesson, but they don't have really so much requirement from the school. They they can do basically whatever they want, they just just have to do two options and, and the guitar class, of course. And how long does that last? I mean, the time they want, kind of. I mean, they have a, a certain number of lessons, mm -hmm. and uh, we organize this the way the way people want. But usually, I do the same. And for the other, it can be one each two week or one each week, depends. Oh wow! Yeah. Cool, cool. Uh, Fabio, how how is it in Royal Academy of Music? Like, do you are, are you also involved in the auditions process or like in the admissions process, or is it more like visiting and then the the folks that are more like sitting in London, do that uh, alone? Well, the guys who are there in London, they, they usually do that because uh, I'm not there at the beginning of December very often. So that's when they do the auditions. Got it. So usually it's Michael Lewin and, and the other um, people on, uh, on, on the guitar department. Um, but yeah, it's pretty much the same numbers. We have sometimes 14, sometimes 16 or 17 students. Overall, I mean, including uh, undergrad and postgrad. Right. And um, of course, the undergrads, they have to do uh, lots of other subjects. Postgrads, they have to develop. Well, uh, on, on the top of writing uh, dissertation and everything, they have to, uh, to develop more advanced artistic projects. So, hmm. 
And is it, is, it, is it not like like in the US where like, because the US has this very rigid like bachelor, master's and then DMA. And in the DMA, you have to do like four different uh, uh, four different recitals and two of like, there's a lecture recital and then a chamber music recital. Like in, in to, to graduate from these programs, is, is any program kind of like that? More like mm -hmm. chamber music oriented or not? Each, each one is different. You can sort of uh, tailor it to suit your, your demands. So you can, uh, you can give a final concert uh, 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 where the program has something to do with your dissertation, with, with, with your field of study, uh, mm -hmm. but you, you, you're not focused alone on, on uh, your dissertation. You can have lots of secondary subjects, especially if you're doing a PhD. Not many people do it anyway, but uh, for the master's degree, yeah. Uh, can you do a PhD in Royal Academy? Yeah. Or... Say it again? Can you do a PhD in Royal Academy? No. Yeah, of course you have to be... It, it is, um, what do you call, a connection between uh, the Royal Academy and another university, probably King's College, I think. So ah, okay. you do the academics in both places, and uh, your diploma comes from the University of London. Got it, got it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, some some programs are like that. Like, there's like a Juilliard and uh, and and I think it's like a Juilliard Columbia program, and there's like a Boston, like a Harvard and the New England Conservatory, something like that. Um, I actually heard that uh, one of the kids from San Francisco, the kid that worked that um, that uh, that studied with Scott Schmiel uh, from like very very young. And won the second prize of the GFA for youth in 2017. Is actually studying astrophysics in Stanford and guitar in in the in the San Francisco Conservatory now. So so it, it's, it's interesting. You're you're seeing more and more people just like branching out, like we were talking last time, right? Do you feel that's the case, or or in your in your when you were a student, you also saw a lot of people, I don't know, studying engineering or something else. I mean, in San Francisco, it's it's a uh, it's very specific because um, you have a lot of uh, of uh, young people who are the first. The the main reason is that I mean, I don't say that to people, but the te the, the, the teacher Scott Camille is really ex exceptional person as a teacher. But also, the the students are this kind of uh, very. Um, uh, I mean, not smart is not the good word because everybody is smart, but they, they, they are they have this the guitar, the music, I mean the violin, whatever, and another topic very strong in university. It's a very uh, they, they do both. And you know, in US also you have a lot of people who develop another field than just the traditional studies, mm. also to have the best university. So it can be basket players, guitar, right. mm -hmm. whatever, chess players. So they, they have two topics very strong because if if they really want to to have the best school uh, in US, it's a very strong advantage. So you have some people, they are really involved with music for sure. They like music as much as the other, but they are not necessarily thinking of doing that professionally. And that, that was one of the things really amazing in San Francisco is there were a lot of kids who were really good and in Europe, there would have been 80% of those best that would do that professionally. Mm. And in, in San Francisco, it was much less because it was seen as an another topic. Yeah, it's almost like a way to get in school. Like, it kind, That's kind of how it worked for me. Like, uh, I mean, I went to Arizona, right? And mm. then once there, like you, that's your ticket to go to school and to avoid mm. a lot of... Uh, a lot of debt, right? Because in the US you have like yes, education costs exactly. a lot. So this is like music is is a differentiator, almost like a way for you as a student to mm -hmm. be different than other high school students that just played soccer or like or, or basketball or something like yeah. that. And and that, that allows you to go to school and uh, yes. and then broaden your education, right? Um, but no, it's 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 really cool that that you know I, I completely agree. Like uh, Scott has been super consistent over the years. Uh, developing these young kids, and uh, but you see a lot of them like going that path. It's uh, it's very interesting. Yeah, and 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 in the way they are into the music is is really totally sincere. I mean, I hmm. there's no nothing to diminish. It's even more impressive. It's just uh, and also I have a theory, but I'm pretty sure I'm right about that. 
in uh, you know in Europe when you are a musician you don't necessarily make a, a lot of money but normally if everything is fine you can survive and the other job you you might make a little bit more money but you will go in the same school you will have the same kind of health insurance uh this you will go to the same doctors in us i mean the difference is so big that it's a very difficult step to to decide to do music i mean i used to teach kids and young player before they decide and i guess if i were in a country where if you are a doctor you make uh, 20 times or 50 times more than a musician it would be very difficult for me to push uh Anybody yeah. to do music if they are good at school. In, mm -hmm. in in France and in Europe, there are some difference, but not as much. So it's easier to, 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 to do that step. I mean, if you know that you will be able to have school for your kids and health insurance and this kind of thing. And that's something very important in US, I'm pretty sure. I know, absolutely. I mean, and I, I vouch and guarantee like the difference is uh is is very striking. It's like the the the, fee, the the income distribution, like you were saying, in Europe is much more flat. Yeah. Like over there in the US, if you're a doctor, if you're a lawyer, it's like you're making yeah. literally like 5x yeah. <laughs> as, as any, like a, even a, as a professor mm -hmm. in, in, in music. So very different field of play, right? So it's good for kids, I think, to, to think about this actively, yeah. you know? I mean, and, and actually use music as a way to, to, um, to be able to get an education in music or in anything else, no. Mm. So, no, it, it's very good. It's very good. Uh, all right. I mean, one of the reasons why I wanted to um, to start chatting with you, folks, is also to get a uh, to go deeper in some of the conversations that happen in Facebook, you know, and that sometimes end in a in a in 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 a post or something like that. And uh, you know, there's a bunch. There's been a bunch of those over the years, but. Uh, over the past week or so, uh, there was this post by Paolo, you know, and I actually mentioned it, Julie uh, Gael, that maybe we could discuss that, uh, that one. And I think it's very interesting, right? Because like, it, it's, uh, I think people do want to hear more and like, per perhaps more than what a, what a, what a Facebook post or an Instagram post uh, allows for, because it, in the end, it's such a short thing. You cannot really discuss complex ideas uh, in, in that format. But uh, but I found your answer really interesting, and maybe maybe we can kick it there. And I'm I'm pretty sure Fabio that that, that you have also a pretty pretty awesome take on this, because uh, it is it, it really um, I think uh, has a lot to do with how we develop as musicians and and how we think about quality, right? So so going at uh, like sharing right like what what that post was right. So I'm just gonna read it aloud, and then we can talk about it because uh, and I don't know if you wanna. Simply read your your um your response, Judy Kael, or just like I comment it, know. right? But uh, yeah. essentially, what pa what Paolo said was like, okay, uh, some performers would just be better not off not playing certain works. It's terrible to listen to a marvel like a Dante from Bach Sonata, uh, you know, thousand three, Bach Bach uh, slaughtered by accents and disconnected that denote poor taste and lack of boundless sensitivity. And let it go until you're ready. You will do a great service to music and to those who really understand. And uh, I found your answer very interesting. Uh, I let me see if I can find it. Right, of course, all of this stuff is public. Uh, let me see. I don't know if I can find it. But uh, essentially, you, you said something to like to the tone of like, well, who 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 says like who's right, right? And who who says who understands, right? Something I like that. I, I mean, I I mean, I, I just have two part of my thinking is, uh, I mean, somehow the, the, the post is not enough precise. Hmm. Uh, it, it means that the, the main the main question is who's playing and how is playing. I mean, if you don't have that, if I if I say uh, some people are doing very bad movies or whatever, hmm. yes. But it doesn't really give any information, in my opinion. And after that, mm -hmm. um, th so that's the first part. So if he says, who's who's the this famous player who's playing not good for him, the mm -hmm. bag, we can talk because I I don't know if I would agree. I have no idea. And so that that's the first part. Mm -hmm. So uh, 
I know it's difficult to give a name, but if you start to, to, to say that, why not giving a name first? And second, uh, if it's something less obvious, hmm. I mean, which means not somebody who is playing very, very bad, uh, it becomes a little bit more difficult mm -hmm. to 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 have uh, an opinion that is not arguable. Just a few hours ago, I gave a mm -hmm. lesson of somebody who played a, a sonata by Scarlatti. Mm -hmm. And uh, two hours ago. Mm -hmm. And I asked him, uh, it's not my student, he just came to prepare an exam. And I asked him um, who he was listening. He's an 18 years old guy, very good player. And he told me, oh, uh, my teacher told me to listen uh, Scott Ross. Oh. And uh, for me, it's very interesting because when I was young, uh, Scott Ross was the, the main reference. Mm -hmm. And uh, he's the first one to record everything, blah, blah, blah. And now it's, I mean, the taste has changed totally. The, the obstacle player, they just play totally differently. And and not just the guitarist, not just the pianist, but the, the obstacle player, they play totally differently. And now, in my opinion, what I used to like 20 mm -hmm. years ago, and yet 20 years ago, I wasn't a baby, I was yet giving concerts, is not what I like now. Mm -hmm. And a lot of things that I like now, if I heard 20 years ago, I would have think that this guy is crazy. I mean, all those change of <laughs> tempo they do now in Scarlet this mm -hmm. kind of improvisation, like changing few notes, adding some stuff. Uh, I mean, I'm sure if I heard that 20 years ago, I would have, I think that the guy is a clown. And it's it like looks sacrilege. like a lot, yeah. a, a, lot, a lot of obstacle players that play like this now. Mm -hmm. And I didn't decide to change. It just came like this. Mm -hmm. And now, for in my opinion, uh, Scott Ross, it looks really, I mean, nobody is playing like this anymore. So I don't want to say it's good or bad. It's not my point of view. Mm -hmm. It's just that the way of playing in 20 years, 25 years has totally changed. And because of that, if we want to say who's playing good, who's playing bad, except for really obviously bad players, it's a little bit more complex. This is what I, I, I want to say. No, it makes, makes total sense. I, I just just for a, for, for a, for a small follow-up there, like who is who are you listening to now with Carlatti, for instance? Okay, I'm, it's not... Uh, 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 for, for Scarlatti, I mean, in France, for example, very popular is Jean Rondeau, who just Rondeau, changed yeah. everything. But mm -hmm. the piano player that I listen much more piano, because I think it's somehow for the guitar, you can steal more ideas on piano than on an harpsichord. I mean, all the all the recent version, they are very freestyle. I mean, the most extreme maybe would be Pletnev, but, uh, mm -hmm. but a lot play like this. I mean, a lot play, not like him, but with a lot of variety, changing sometimes the octaves and everything. And and maybe in 10 years, it, in 20 years, it would be again different, but but it's all the time the interpretation. I mean, nothing, we didn't have any new information specifically about Bach music, about mm. Baroque music the last 25 years. I mean, I don't think that somebody discovers something. And and just after that, I, I'm finished to talk. Uh, uh, just to tell you that that it's real like this. I was listening uh, 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 a recording of the Rachmaninoff of three concerto three, and uh, I, I read on the comments, "Oh, this is play without this Ranantondo before the Kansa that everybody is doing the last thirty years." It was a recording of the seventies of uh, I can't say the name very good, but of a very famous pianist from Russia, uh, from Georgia. <laughs> I, I'm sorry, I say very badly. But anyway, I decided to check and I just realized that it's true. <laughs> Most of the recent version, they do a huge Rarantondo before the cancer, which is not written by, by Rachmaninoff. And, mm -hmm. and on the past, people were doing that less. So it, it really means, means that there's a lot of fashion and stuff which are good are not good mm -hmm. before or after. I mean, it's more complex. That's all. No, oh, I co completely agree. Um, Fabio? You're probably not, not sure if you read the comment before, but uh, on the topic I think of... I, did. I think I did. I did. Um, uh, the funny thing to start with <laughs> is that I obviously play in a very different style comparing to Judy Kayal. But in most musical things, we actually do agree. Mm -hmm. So I think that tells a lot, you see, mm -hmm. because having opinions is not the same as playing. Describing things is not the same as making them real. Uh, that rem reminds me of a, of a story of somebody who was blind 
and mm -hmm. ask somebody to tell them what is milk like and the person said well milk is white okay but what is white oh <laughs> the clouds are white mm, okay uh well a, a swan is is white ah and what is what, what what is a swan like and then the guy just you know did this with the hand and said well this is a swan and the guy just started <laughs> Ah, now I know what white is. Mm, what? And that is pretty much what you do when you are reading descriptions of how something should be played. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Especially for something like, like Bach that it's it's so uh, still not so deliberate or prescriptive, right? It's 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 still an, an a starting point uh for for them a lot uh, for the performer to, to contribute a lot, no? In, that in my experience, all the treatises, of course, they had some very technical stuff, especially when you are talking about how to play figure bass. That is very specific, the way they want to voice things and uh, how many notes to, to add and not to add. That is something that is very palpable and concrete. But style of playing is something that is descriptive. So if you go, let's say, to something that is very... Uh, a basic thing about tempo, you shouldn't be neither too fast as though it sounds rush and or too slow, so it drags. I mean, what what is the the? How do you hit at the center? Is it the same for you or for me? And the thing is, if you're if you're uh, talking about somebody like Gustav Leonhardt, he for sure he studied all the treatises and all the academic studies that Andreas Steyer did or Jean Rondeau did. But each one of them had a had a reading that was focusing on something slightly different otherwise they wouldn't play so different from each other but you cannot tell that one is right or wrong because they prob they probably have pretty much the same academic background if anything i mean the older people had more of an, an academic background because they had more time to study so it's very complicated <laughs> to to yeah. be sure of uh, of uh, i mean I, i'm very suspicious of uh, saying oh this is the right way of playing something because we actually don't know. Uh, that reminds me of another thing that is very, very concrete, very palpable. Imagine that you want to teach somebody or to, to develop a, an idea of how to play Agustin Barrios, okay? Then you have descriptions of how Barrios played and you know that he used string stills and uh, uh, steel strings and he played on a certain kind of guitar and that he played in a very passionate way and that his rhythm, he rushed a lot and blah, 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 blah. And then you have the description of that. The thing is, you have a recording of Barrios playing the, the stuff, you know? And then maybe the conclusions that you had by, by reading the sources has nothing to do with the actual way yeah. Barrios played and that you can hear actually. What would be, I mean, of course, we don't want to play exactly the same way that Bach or Scalati did, but we want to do something that is credible. Yeah? Mm -hmm. So how close and how far is that from what Bauer Scalati did? So, I mean, uh, I, I like to have a healthy dose of doubt, of uh, not being so, so self-assured about my knowledge or my ways of doing things. Whenever I work with a student, I prefer to start from their experience so I can figure out what they have, what they lack, and uh, how to help them to better express the way they, what they are. That's my stance in that subject. Yeah, I, I mean, the, the, the point, and, and, and I agree, right? Like, I think we both can like agree a lot on on, uh, on on these ideas, right? And I'm pretty sure that if we had Paolo here, for instance, like he would agree a lot uh, on, on that as well, right? Like the point was not to put him on the spot or anything. It's no, just no, an opportunity not... to, because uh, he's a fantastic, really, really fantastic uh, teacher, you know? And he's one, and they, he's, he's one yeah. of the person also yeah. who... Who can like to disagree? I mean, in the good way. I mean, yeah, yeah. yeah. He, it's not. I mean, it's not like this. You know, it, it, it can we can talk, disagree, and it's nice and interesting. Right. I, I mean, I I really wonder though, like uh, at the beginning of your point, right? Uh, who, who was it that that just uh, you know <laughs> warranted that reaction, right? And I'm like, uh, I'm, I'm not gonna I'm I'm not gonna hypothesize. But it's a very, very interesting opportunity for us to chat about this kind of stuff, right? Because then, then the natural next question is like, how do you yourself like draw the line, 
like of how much you should know versus how much you need to uh, make it your own interpret. It's a super, super difficult question, right? Uh, but but what what is your own process, right? Because I, the, the typical thing and what 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 most master classes stay with is like one professor will tell you. Uh, Okay, you're playing Albeniz, listen to Adisa de la Rocha. You're playing this, listen to that. Mm. You're playing that, listen to this, right? But it's almost like giving, you know, like quick pharmacy recipes. Mm. It's like, there, you'll be better, right? And uh, I'm thinking the work has to be deeper than that, right? It's not just the listening part, but... And it changes for for everybody else. Like for every person, I think, has their own their own way of approaching it, right? So so what is what is yours? I mean, my, it's difficult. I mean, my way, I did very, very few studies, academical story, uh, studies. I did nothing, let's say, in particular for somebody of my generation, because I finished conservatory so young that I didn't have time to do it. And after that, I didn't do. And the, the thing uh, the thing is, uh, for, for example, my, my process uh, for, with the actors, it's a little bit more concrete, so I can use that to, to describe. Mm -hmm. uh, when you have a role, in movie or in theater, uh, some people will imagine the the family, the life of the character, even if it, it doesn't interfere in the action of the movie. You know, they will try to to build a character, mm -hmm. and some other people they will, you know, the the, the famous story of uh, of uh, the De Niro for Taxi Driver who just did taxi during one month, blah blah, blah right. these yeah. kind of things. And uh, me, I would go more like this because it's my way to work. I mean, for example, if I want to play uh, Almond, because Almond is for me, it's more difficult than Bourré, Gavotte and everything. What I do is I will listen just a bunch of Almond without thinking, just a bunch of them. Uh, not the same th than the one I play. And, and at some point, I will understand a bit the reason. Mm -hmm. So I, I, do, I do like this for me. I just try to to try to find uh, 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 the rhythm most of the time. The, do, the you, do you do you do uh, you when you do a whole suite, for instance, you try to find a common architecture, or you follow? No, the... I try. I try to don't think. That's the thing. Uh, with my students, I try to think to understand what they do. I just tell you a small anecdote. I, I record uh, some uh, Ponce CD, and I record one movement of uh, of a lost sonata by Ponce. And yeah. uh, mm. and it's Gilardino who gave me that maybe six months or one year before. And I say to Naxos that I will record it. And after that, I didn't work on it because I just kind of forgot and I didn't see the score. So one week before the recording, I say, I, I say kind of a lie that it wasn't really playable, but I didn't really check. But it was yet on, on the contract. So they asked me to do it. And... Uh, so I learned the piece, but I did, really didn't have time. I have very few days. So I just learned the piece and didn't understand anything and even didn't really try to make uh, any kind of uh, transcription for the guitar. Anyway, I did mm. that and I wasn't able to play the full piece. I was playing part by part because it was too difficult because I didn't do the, the arrangement to make it playable on the guitar. So basically mm -hmm. I didn't understand anything on the piece, but really, and with the editing process and everything, actually, this is the stuff I prefer on my CD. I mean, oh. it's uh, <laughs> very strange, but really, I don't lie. I mean, I don't say this is the best. Maybe some people will hate it, but for me, it's really, it's really the best thing. And I understood the piece when I heard myself playing because when I play, I was just trying to play the notes and be, you know, I was just trying to do that, and I wasn't able to play the piece. So. Uh, and I was thinking that the process was good but because I didn't understand anything on the piece. Uh, so there is... So it's like a purely intuitive kind of first, first yes, reaction, I mean, I, I, first exploration yes. of the piece. Wow. Yes. And, and that I, is, I, is that is, I, I'm sharing it. I, I was just like curious. I, I Googled it or like I looked at it. Uh, know, is in, guitar sonata number two. Number two, this one. Yeah. Okay. And I, yeah. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> yeah. And, and the way I play it, it's not really, it's probably not playable because I was doing bars with any finger because I I didn't have the time to really think about which note I will quit. So it's really uncomfortable. But anyway, so for me, it's like this, but for other people, it would be totally different. Wow. I mean, I, I mean, just, just a minor comment there, like 
sometimes the studio that's a wonderful thing about studios you know like uh sometimes like stuff just happens and uh it's just we're lucky that that there was a microphone there yeah. like uh like I I think uh, Barreco just released uh, his arrangements of Faya like after thirty years or something because like it was impossible. Like I still have no idea how he did that. <laughs> like because we I remember one time like at two in the morning with some friends in uh in in Dusseldorf we were in the in the we we used to stay up very very long we used to pull all all nighters just practicing uh, it was a lot of fun. And then in a in a break or something, we're like having water or something. We will listen to music, and then at some point we listen to the, to to those arrangements, and then like, wait, what? Like it was almost impossible to play, even two guitars. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's uh, sometimes it happens like that. Uh, awesome, uh, Fabio. What about you? Like, how how do you approach this 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 big big question of? Yeah, I mean, I had to confront a piece, and I I'm going to educate myself into be able to to know what I'm doing. Like, uh, why should you care? I was talking. I was trying to think it out because I'm not very systematic at all in that. Uh, first of all, I, I I tend to trust my intuition a lot. So, first of all, I get the music and I read it many times. I play and play it again and play it again. And every time I play, a new idea comes up, and then I try to, to make something up. Another thing that, that is important, I come from a Catholic background. Yeah. And you know what Catholics are like. We want to embrace everything and uh, to be able to, uh, how can I say, to make sure that every part of a process makes part of a larger narrative. And mm -hmm. to me, this larger narrative is being able to perhaps become one or, I mean, you imagine the, the composer like that and you try as much as you can to get close to it somehow. Mm. And how do I do that? I try to study the composer, its time, its literature, it, his, his or her biography, uh, recordings uh, of, uh, of the piece and uh, of other pieces. For me, for instance, studying Moreno Torroba or, or Ponce, when I was much younger, it was one of the hardest things because except for the violin concerto, you couldn't find anything by mm -hmm. Ponce. There was, you could get some printed music, some songs or something, but you couldn't actually uh, hear much music by Ponce except for the guitar music. Mm -hmm. So it was very difficult for me to make, to create a picture of what the person, the mm -hmm. universe Ponce was like. And the same you can tell about, you know, a number of other composers. Um, so nowadays, in that sense, you have more access to, to that, I mean, through online uh, printed music or online recordings and everything. But I, I really have to belong to that universe. I have to, to make part of that, that particular bubble of, of knowledge and culture. So that is the process that I have while I'm learning the piece. So uh, right now, I'm, I'm learning some Toroba and Turina for a recording. Mm -hmm. I cannot think of anything else. I've, I've got all the books I can, uh, I can have on the subject. I've been listening to Tzarzuelas a lot. Uh, I'm very much more acquainted with Turina's uh, chamber music now than I once was. And then that is what, what actually creates new ideas to me and uh, new approaches because for instance, if you, if you listen to Turina's chamber music, his piano trios and everything, uh, they are much more disciplined music than his guitar music is like. So we start mm -hmm. to ask ourselves, what was he trying to tell with his guitar music that he was not able when he was writing more conventional chamber music? So yeah, that, that is what the, the kind of question that I make. I really try to, to have this kind of overall picture and overall dominion over mm. the phenomenon, the cultural phenomenon of the music I'm playing. And, and Otherwise, it would be very boring. I mean, just, you know, learning the notes and uh, going by by script. I cannot think of a more boring kind of work than that, to be honest. Yeah, I mean, I, I think everybody, right, tries to bring their own inter their, their own point of view, right? And then you have a you have a very researched, analytical point of view, but at, we, at which point also, you just let yourself go and be like, ah, this sounds nice. Uh, I guess I guess what you're trying to say is that you go through all that process so that for you, what sounds nice is intuitively according to what, I guess, Turin or whatever composer would have liked. Like you, you, you are so immersed 
into, into that world, so to say, that then what sounds good in your ear then becomes, uh, it, it is closer to the, to the truth. But like, is that, is that kind of the idea? To an extent. Yeah. To be honest, I, I don't claim to, to, to be able to find the truth on anything. Mm -hmm. It's just my sense. I cannot, right. help, I cannot help being myself when I play. <laughs> it's only that being myself is not enough. Mm -hmm. It's, it's, to me, it's, it's very insufficient just being myself, to project myself as the alpha and omega of music making. I'm not. And, and where do you draw the line? Like, or, or is, that, is that not something that you necessarily uh, deliberately, consciously do? No, it's completely not, not deliberate. It's only that something that sort of enters my subconscious, the subconscious level. And then I let the subconscious level work on that in a more or less, um, how can I say, undisciplined level. Yeah, Musically so there's, there's, there's a big sense of intuition, I guess, is what Judica was yeah. also sharing earlier, no? Exactly. Uh, no, I mean, it's, it's a huge topic, you know, I, and, and I think in many ways, uh, many times we, when we talk about music, uh, it is around this kind of topic of how we learn, or like what is, what is the truth or like what is uh, uh, the right way to do things? Because just, just, just with the guitar in itself, just to be, play the notes sometimes, it's, it's hard enough, right? Yeah. No, thanks so much for, 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 also, for that. Also, sometimes guys. when we're dealing with students, sometimes I, I wouldn't say that we overrate, but we just assume the student has all the background that you at their age also had. But many times that is not the truth. Mm -hmm. Many times you will ask the student to say, well, does, where does this uh, musical phrase start? Where does it end? And where is the, the point of maximum harmonic tension? And the student many times won't be able to, to project that or, or to point that. And of course, it's not the student's fault. It's something that then you have to, to help with. But you cannot assume that just because they are good players and uh, you had some sort of a musical upbringing at the time you were the, their age, that they, they will have the same. So I think there are lots of you know, basic stuff about musicianship that we sometimes take for granted, but many times the students don't. Is that the case, Julika? Like when, when, when you're working with like a high perform like and you have a couple mm -hmm. i've heard uh, <laughs> of good uh, of, of fairly you know uh, capable students right and at that point then the conversation is no longer necessarily well hit the notes or like this doesn't mm -hmm. sound more clear when you're working on the more uh, uh content kind of stuff mm -hmm. uh, is how how is that a, how is that conversation for instance in a in a back suite or something like that i i, I can imagine it it depends on the student Right. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Uh, it yeah. Of course, it depends. It doesn't depend on the piece. I mean, I don't really have a. I don't have really something more specific for Bach or Toba or whatever. So mm -hmm. it doesn't depends of the piece, of the scene for sure, but not on on the piece. Uh, it depends because. Uh, uh, okay, it's a ex student, and he, he will not recognize himself. I'm sure, but uh, the the. the the, the guy was playing all the style of music extremely good even you know this kind of early music not so known and and uh didn't know anything really and uh if i say oh you could do some ornaments in some baroque music it's a very very long time that i had this is this student very long time and he was really all the time his instinct was good even for some very specific stuff so obviously uh, it, was, it was no knowledge it, it was yeah. just like it would just sound good to to the person yes and <laughs> uh and and at the same time i was totally amazed i mean i kind of would like that it can't happen <laughs> because uh <laughs> but i had i i, I had i have to see that it happens so uh, in terms of this kind of knowledge it, it really depends uh, I mean, it's uh, all the time teaching. It's a human thing, and uh, you need to be um, you need to be careful in the way. Of course, you know. For example, Fabio. What one of the thing he say that anyway, it's not his fault if he doesn't have an amazing background. So I think the worst thing would be to to blame him or show him that he's ignorant. I mean, that's the situation we have sometimes, and we need to deal with first how he plays and what we think that uh, are the lack for him. 
so I, I don't have really any specific method, but for sure the guilt is the worst make worst method. So mm. the guilt is a bad method, and of course, if you say, "Oh, if you listen that that that," or you read this this, you will play better. It's also not true. Mm -hmm. uh, it 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 would be the same thing that it can help, but ultimately not help directly for sure it's a little bit you know when somebody has a bad uh, writing bad spelling and you say okay you should read victor hugo you're going to to do less mistake might happen but in a, a very long term so it can't be the reason the reason can't be you're going to play better now you need to build the interest you need to show that it's great to know you need to see it's more fun to play i mean you need to find this but if you want to be if you want to to show a concrete result uh, if it doesn't happen, which can really happen, uh, you will destroy everything. That I gave think. me an idea for, for, for another topic that is going to take us like three hours, but maybe we can uh, chat uh, uh, in, in another one of these. Uh, thank you so much. This is so, so cool to, uh, to pick your brain on this because uh, I'm pretty sure a lot of, a, a lot of students are really asking what's the depth, right, of, of, of how you should approach this. And uh, we live in an age, right, where everybody's selling you the, the the recipe, right? It's like, subscribe to this thing, you learn from this person, and this is the way you should play it, and boom, done, check, next, right? And it's not necessarily that, right? So we'll continue that conversation. Uh, I just wanted to to give us a couple of minutes because uh, very, very sad news. I don't, I don't want to end on a sad note, so so we'll find a way to to flip it at the end, but uh, I did want to take a minute to uh, to remember and Sergio Abreu, you know, I know it's, it was particularly uh, hard for you, Fabio. I've, I've seen you posting uh, things almost daily. Uh, Marcelo also posting a lot of things. He's 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 a hero, you know. Like he's he he's he and he I mean, say he is because his his um, influence will continue uh, for for forever. Like for in the in the history of the guitar, it's an incredible story about uh, about this guy. And it, you know, we're lucky that. Fabio, you are someone who know, knew him fairly well um, for many years. So any any remembrance on, on Sergio? Why why should hits that maybe haven't heard too much of the Abreu brothers because there's not too many recordings or videos and stuff like that? What uh, what, what is that you think uh, should should he be remembered for? Well, um, I, I've known Sergio since 1986. That is when I bought my first guitar that was made by him. It was his number 24. <laughs> by, the time, by the time he died, uh, he had made 767 guitars. So um, the thing is, to put it short, Sergio, if I come to think of that, he was the best musician I've ever met in my entire life. And you know, because I, I direct a big music festival, I've spent some time with some of the top conductors, pianists, string quartet players, top people from the major orchestras. And I have no doubt that if Sergio had instead uh, put his efforts in being uh, in any one of those professions, he would be superior to the other ones. And I didn't forget all the famous people I've ever met. Mm -hmm. uh, his mu music was just the way he was. He and music was the one thing. Uh, and I cannot really even start to describe what it was like to see him playing live. I mean, in, in 86, he had already quit his career for some four years, four or five years, but he still practiced at home. And it was the kind of immaterial beauty and perfection that you very rarely listen to in, in, in the guitar, even today. I mean, you have hundreds of marvelous players nowadays, but what people are doing now, both in technical terms and in terms of uh, musical understanding and uh, expressive projection, I think the Abreus, especially Sergio, they were doing that in the, in the 1960s and 70s already. So uh, without even knowing that, they were visionaries in the sense that they, they sort of had a, a thoroughly modern approach to playing the guitar. So that, that's what I think of uh, the Abreus and of Sergio playing, Sergio's playing particularly. Why that? Because they didn't have any kind of uh, guitaristic upbringing. 
They had a very strict teacher who said, well, don't listen to other guitarists because you have to develop your own, uh, your, your own style. And in 1960, if I'm not wrong, Michelangeli played in Rio and Sergio went to a Michelangeli concert and said, well, that is the real stuff. That's what I have to bring to the guitar. So he decided to develop his own technique to play more or less along those lines on the guitar. So I think that is pretty much of a big thing to do. And to a, to a, to a certain extent, that is what he did as a guitarist. So uh, that's it. Uh, and uh, the thing is, while I was uh, growing up as a guitarist in Brazil, of course, we have uh, incredible references here. We had already Turibio Santos and the Assad brothers were starting to get famous at the time. And of course, the Assads, they are absolutely incredible uh, for certain spheres of the repertoire. But the Abreus were still very much uh, the reference here. And uh, this thing of achieving this kind of immaculate musical and uh, technical approach that was only not immaculate, but also natural and telling and expressive was something that was very much on the back of my mind every time I tried to improve as a guitarist. So I cannot really even start to say how grateful I am to him and the privilege of uh, being his friend for, for some 30 years. I mean, everything that I did, I would show to Sergio and he would always be, be very gracious, very generous and listen to everything and uh, uh, make suggestions and propose things. And I always was overwhelmed by the lightness with which he would carry all his wisdom. It, it was something that it was like like talking to an angel. No, it's a bit, bit like a father for many. No, like I remember, I think pretty much every Brazilian guitarist that I've met knew him in in one way or the other. Like my my good friend Eduardo Minosi played uh, uh, one of his guitars, and <coughs> that's the first time I I I, I heard the guitar uh, in, my, in my living. Like I was, he was my roommate. And uh, and I actually heard um, Luis Mantovani uh, play here in Berlin like two weeks ago, also uh, on a on an Abreu. Uh, really, really, really like uh, he was able to translate a lot of that stuff into into guitar building as well. Very traditional, right? I guess inspired by by the you know traditional models and stuff like that. And uh, yeah, I mean it's it 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 was it's one of the major figures in, of, of guitar in Brazil and. It, so I've heard many stories about why he retired, uh, uh, why they retired, etc. And I think Eduardo is a is an engineer, if I'm not mistaken, right? Exactly. Uh, no, super, super interesting, I I interesting background. And I I don't think people necessarily just just by by default, right? Like hear about them too much, uh, uh, but they should. Uh, should they only I, have. I, uh, <laughs> sorry to interrupt, but the yeah. thing is that today there's only one CD that is officially released with their plan. Of course, you have right. lots of uh, bootleg recordings that are on YouTube and everything. And videos, yeah. But it's only that one BBC concert recording that, that is available. Yeah, Not thanks to Marcelo again, okay, right? Because like, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I was actually surprised because like, I remember my, my friend Eduardo, like, you know, poor students with like pen drives, like, oh, here's an MP3 of like this recording or that recording, right? But uh um, thank God that they're not putting people in jail for <laughs> for this, so we can admit this. <laughs> like the, the 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 labels don't care anymore, right? Uh, they are doing the streaming themselves. But but yeah, no, it's true. It I, I was I was listening. I listened to the entire CD again, and it was just so impressive. Like both together, and then each of them doing the solo pieces was just very modern. It sounds still very modern. It's been sixty years. Uh, Judicale, when was your first time that you heard of the Abreus? Like, of uh, do you remember? Like, was, it, was I, I don't remember. I, I met him uh, one time. I a very long time ago. I was on holidays in Rio, and uh, I contact him just to because I knew him. You know, mm -hmm. I mean by name and heard very few things, and uh, I came to his. Uh, his place where he had the guitar super late. I think it was like one o'clock in the morning. For I mean, <laughs> it wasn't my choice. I didn't say, "Oh, I will come at one o'clock in the morning." But he proposed me to come at one o'clock in the morning, oh and uh, <laughs> oh and uh, he showed me his guitar that I knew yet. I mean, maybe I knew from you, Fabio, and uh, and uh, and after that, uh, he he showed me uh, himself playing the Grand Sonata by. Uh, uh, Alvaro, Alvaro. Uh, by Niccolo Paganini 
and uh, and yes, it was wonderful and very special because uh, and of course after that I've seen some videos through YouTube. There are some 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 videos which are really uh, in the the way it's really really seventy style, you know, yeah. because they were doing this kind of, uh, of stuff. But of course the playing is really amazing. I mean, I mean historically they were like three super important duo i mean uh, presti la goya of course was probably the first very known and after that it was the abreu and after that Assad. but uh yeah if we had to say three duos for sure it would be those six person that's that's no it it, it and every person like i think oh, because they're more contemporary every, but most people know of the Assad, but like presti la goya they also have some really yeah, yeah, yeah. ridiculous kind of kind of and, music uh, making and yeah. and, the, and the thing is uh, uh if uh, he's uh, less known now first because he has no he has no guitar activity for many years and also <clears throat> because uh, uh, uh people uh, i mean now we forgot extremely quickly everybody that's one of the major difference uh even some uh uh People alive like Alfred Brendel is still alive, is still teaching. Believe me, among young pianists, a lot of people don't really know who is he, if he's alive. <laughs> That's the first thing. And uh, but really, so even some very big name, as soon as they are not active anymore, people just forget. And uh, not specifically on the guitar. Really. That's well, while he while he's still alive, then Alfred Brendel should obviously open a TikTok, right? Or, or, <laughs> <Yeah>. or <laughs> like, what would that be about? <laughs> That's fantastic, man! Yeah. Oh my god! See, I told you, I, 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 I have have succeeded in bringing that to a more positive thing. Uh, no, thank you so much for those memories, Fabio. It's it's very special, and uh, you know, hope to continue to uh to talk about this this uh the, this these topics and. Uh, with you folks in the future, I wanted to end it up on a on a positive note because uh, again the business and I, I I I've been thinking maybe I should start closing it with like an update because like of course like you guys are two freaking geniuses of this thing is like what's my contribution <laughs> where like uh, you know I I I do keep track uh, or I try to keep track of like what's happening uh, in the in the world of the business of uh, of of the guitar especially in the big labels and the things like that and then you guys are 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 obviously you know informed as well but just for the people listening like uh you know we can give a little a little update on uh, what's happening and this was a great great news that i that i actually heard from from the man himself um right one day before this was announced so arts management group uh you know they've changed names a couple of times uh, in the past, but it's uh, they're directed by Bill Capone, who's like a major manager agent management agency um, in the U.S. And they have you know people like like these folks, like Belcia Quarter, Alessio Bax, Mitsuko Uchida, and this is just for the U.S. And uh, if you start scrolling down here, you're gonna see a very familiar face. Rafael just uh, just announced that he's uh, now represented by by these folks, and the Beijing Guitar Duo is also represented this uh, by is are in this agency. So extremely happy, uh, also because they just announced his his CD in Deutsche Grammophon as well, which is going to be released in a couple of months. So in May, if I'm not mistaken. So uh, that's fantastic. So now uh, you know he has representation uh, both in Europe and in the US, um, and uh, yeah, the touring shall start. Uh, as well as it, I don't have I don't have anything to show here, but uh, uh, you know I've seen Instagram posts um, that uh, Plinio is recording his new his next album right at the moment. He's, he's, I've seen a couple of things in the in the in Instagram in the studio and stuff like that. And the the, the new CD of Pablo Sainz is also going to be released in like the next month and a half or like uh, by the summer or something like that. So. I think it's great. I think it's a great, uh, you know, development that now we're still, we're beginning to have again, you know, like one album per year, more or less, you know, really interesting productions uh, that are thematic, that are like very well thought of. I, I, I do think that it is as much as I love, you know, YouTube and like people being able to release their own stuff and it's important and like we can now do this kind of stuff. 
right? But I think, I really do think that the act of, uh, you know, going through the professional standard of thinking about a concept, preparing the music as a whole, as a production, right? Like, like, like designers have portfolios, architects have portfolios, like other types of creative professions have portfolios and like a way to to curate their their artistic productions. Uh, musicians do too, right? And then many people that, that I talk to continue to say like, ah, but I, do I need a CD? Do I need an album? Like, what's the point? Why do I need to release it, et cetera, et cetera? Like, I think it is extremely important, even if for the experience of going through the process of coming up with the concept, releasing it, recording it, doing the PR for it, uh, even finding the person to write the booklet notes and stuff like that. It, it is almost like your 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 uh, presentation card, like it's a visiting card, or like uh, of saying, "Hey, I am about. I'm. This is what I'm about as a musician, right?" And of course, if you then are in a in a label like 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 DG or Deca or like Sony, etc., and that goes alongside a PR campaign, a marketing campaign, all of that is experience as a professional musician that for those who want to be a professional musician should have, right? Of course, not everybody can do this, right? Like uh, there's 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 not few, not too many spots, uh, uh, nonetheless for the guitar, but uh, but I think it's fantastic because it sets an example, you know, like uh, in my generation, uh, it was it was it was harder to see that, you know, so often. Uh, so, so I'm really happy that, that, you know, the younger generations have people that they can follow, right. That, that are doing that because then that becomes the goal again. Right. So, so no, I mean, I think, I think it's extremely exciting and uh, we'll be looking and probably, you know, reviewing, maybe we can like click, check, check, check them out, like have reactions on what, on what the, the, the albums, you know, are, are coming out to be. And uh, we can continue to chat folks. Sounds good. Yeah. For sure. We are rooting for, rooting for them. Good, Rafael, yeah. Pablo, and Plinio. Good, good. We are rooting for you. Awesome, folks. Well, have a great month. Enjoy the summer, uh, uh, Fabio. <laughs> right? I hope we get I'm out of summer, the winter. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it, it's not that it was not so so cold in Europe, but now it now it's starting again in, in in February, right? Is it too cold in Paris? No, it's okay. It's okay, no? Yeah, yeah like yeah. around zero degrees, something yeah. like that. No, more, more, more. Oh, okay. Oh, no. Nice. But we are not in Berlin. <laughs> all right. All right, folks. Well, have a great night. Take care. Thank That's you so much. Good talking to you. Take care. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.